Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is the final video in my series on productivity and study techniques. And in this video, I'm going to talk about maintaining focus. One of the things I've struggled most with over the last several years is maintaining my focus during study sessions. Often an idea will pop into my mind and I'll just quickly open up Google, search the answer because I'm kind of curious, but then I realize five, 10 minutes later that I've been going down an internet rabbit hole and I've forgotten exactly what I was supposed to be covering in the first place. So if this sounds familiar to you, I'm going to share a few tips and tricks that I've used to try and reduce that probability that I will end up going down one of these internet rabbit holes. Sometimes I even wonder if I have some kind of undiagnosed ADHD, but that's a topic for another day. So over the year, I've made a somewhat extensive system to try and minimize the about that I spend procrastinating on one of various different sources. The first one is kind of basic. You've probably heard this stacks of times before, and that's just the idea of keeping your phone away. Out of arm's reach, probably in another room is best. Sometimes if I'm in a library, I'll just put it at the bottom of my bag. And I find just having that separation so that it's slightly higher effort to get your phone, even though you know that you definitely could, like I could just get up and go and grab it, or I could reach down in my bag and just pull my phone out. Having that extra degree of separation just makes you think a bit more about it and be like, oh no, actually, it's fine. I can wait, I'll check my phone a bit later. And sometimes I even find like initially in a study period, I'll have kind of like cravings to check my phone or I'll just have some idea that maybe I've got a message I should go check. But then actually if I'm strict with it and I don't let myself get my phone out, by the end of the study session, I'm kind of in a state of flow and I'm no longer interested actually in even checking that phone. I'm not hungry. And the second thing that I do is limit the amount that I use social media. And I have an intricate layered strategy for doing this. Let's take Facebook as an example. The first thing is that I have changed my Facebook password and I've written it down on a sheet of paper so that I can't remember it. And then I'll put that paper somewhere else, maybe in my wallet, maybe in a drawer in the house. And again, that just introduces that separation between me deciding I wanna check something on Facebook and actually going into that drawer or getting my wallet out and actually checking it. And that restriction in itself actually then reduces the amount of time that I spend on Facebook. One issue I've had with this is that actually over time, I start remembering the password. So I have to kind of remember to change it every now and again. But on the whole, I found that to be fairly effective. So the second line of defense that I have against myself for Facebook is a pretty neat plugin that I use for Google Chrome, which I will demonstrate now. It is called the Newsfeed Eradicator for Facebook. And what this extension does is it basically stops you from seeing anything in your newsfeed and it replaces it with some kind of inspirational quote. So today it is Henry Ford, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. What is nice about this is I personally found most of the time that I would consider kind of wasted time on Facebook is when I was just scrolling aimlessly down my newsfeed, uh, which I think is a habit a lot of us probably have fallen into at different points in time. So if I replace it by this quote, then anything that I do when I'm on Facebook is more purposeful. So if there is something that I wanna check, like an event, or I wanna see a notification, or I want to look at a group, then I will have to actively decide and go on that group. It prevents me from having this passive approach where I just kind of scroll through and just see what's going on. So yeah, that's for Facebook. And I have similar sorts of things for other platforms. So for example, on YouTube, I think it's called Distract Free YouTube. As you can see, I have a lot of extensions. Yeah, so Distract Free YouTube. And this one's pretty awesome because it means I actually don't see anything on YouTube unless I search for it, which can actually even be restrictive sometimes, but it means that if there's something I wanna watch in particular, then I'll have to search for it and think about it. Or if I wanna check someone's channel and see what videos they've uploaded, I'll have to think of that channel and then go on it. And again, it just kind of increases the level of intentionality that I can put into deciding what I wanna watch on YouTube and reduces that risk of me opening up a YouTube browser, maybe having the intention of watching some sort of educational video on medicine or on machine learning, and then seeing some other new video that my favorite YouTuber has made or something that looks really interesting and going down a bit of a rabbit hole of watching videos which might be super interesting and educational but they're not the video that I most wanted to watch or most should be watching at that moment. And finally another Chrome extension that I use for a similar sort of purpose uh, is something called Blocksite and what Blocksite does is you can give it a list of websites that you don't want it to let you visit and then when you open that website it will kind of replace that with an image. For example I know I waste a lot of time on BBC Sport checking the latest football news so now if I go to BBC Sport then instead it will give me a picture, uh, some of which are quite humorous, uh, telling me that actually I've kind of blocked myself from accessing this site. And again, like the other approaches that I've talked about, I could obviously get around this. In fact, I can even just click up here 
and click turn block site off and then it will enable me to look at that website. I could open a Safari browser instead of a Chrome browser and just look at that website. But the point is that I'm not trying to make it physically impossible. I'm just trying to introduce that barrier of friction so that then I'm more likely when that happens to be like, actually, you know what? I probably should be studying and then get back to that. And one other technique that a lot of people do swear by is something called the Pomodoro technique. If you're not familiar with this, essentially it's where you spend 25 minutes of focused, undistracted study, and then you have a five minute break and then you go back to 25 minutes studying, five minute break, etc., back and forth between the two. Some people say that they find this like super, super helpful because they can just focus on that 25 minutes and then do any kind of procrastinating type tasks they wanna do in that five minutes and then get back to that. I've personally had variable results with this. So sometimes I will have a super productive study session where I do 25 minutes, five minutes and stick to that like throughout the whole day maybe. But then sometimes I'll be studying and it'll get to 25 minutes and I just won't quite have finished what I wanna be doing and I don't wanna take a break. And then I might take a break a bit later and then I only take a five minute break and I don't wanna start working again. And that kind of then throws it out. So uh, yeah, it's a bit variable. Sometimes really helpful, sometimes not. I think it depends a bit on the person. So that's the end of this video and the series on productivity and study tips. Thank you for making it all the way to the end. That obviously shows that you have fantastic skills of not being distracted. And I hope you enjoyed this video series. I'll see you in the next video.